Thank you for staying with us on NTV Weekend Edition. Alcohol has been touted as the most abused substance in Kenya. A five-year survey conducted by the National Authority for the Campaign Against Alcohol and Drug Abuse, NACADA, indicates that one in every 16 females are currently using at least one drug or substance of abuse and that one in every 20 females are currently using alcohol. Our reporter Susan Grace and Jerry sat down with three ladies, two who struggled with alcohol and one whose husband struggled with addiction of the bottle. Here is that report. Beginning it was just for fun. For 17 years, Yvonne Lois Kavu, a mother of three, battled alcohol addiction. She began as a social drinker, occasionally sharing a drink with friends and family. When, by the time it was becoming something that I had... This, however, spiraled out of control, making her a regular imbiber. When she could not afford the expensive liquor, she settled for what was readily available, including illicit liquor. But with time, this was out of reach for her, and she had to devise a way to sustain her thirst. So that means I have to wake up at 5 in the morning, not I have children. Wake up at five in the morning and go sit there, wait for the watches. They're going to come with tips from washing cars and whatever, whatever things like that. And I know I can check her. And for help me and drink here and there. She was so hooked to the bottle that even taking care of her daughter proved an uphill task. Relatives had to intervene and rescue the girl, who she would later learn of her whereabouts after visiting the police station. My aunt had to come to the to the station with my brother and when they did uh, we were they were I was told that they're going to stay with her until until I got better four months after delivering her second baby she started drinking again and this time round it was worse as her partner at the time was an alcoholic too Lois later got pregnant with her last born, and since she consumed Chang'a throughout her pregnancy, the baby developed some complications. When she was uh, three days old, she was admitted to Kenyatta because she was jaundiced, which I understand has something to do with the liver. So I just never really went into details finding out what happened exactly, but I just automatically assumed it was because of the amount of alcohol I was taking my mother at the time. Prior to conceiving her daughter, Yvonne had earlier on lost her son, a loss that she could not help but blame herself for. I asked myself, did I deserve it? And the answer to that was probably yes. But even then, I did not stop drinking. You see, he died and I didn't stop. And I still had another child who was malnourished as well, who had to be saved at nine months. When it was all too much for her to bear, she was ready to throw in the towel and contemplated the unthinkable. At some point I wanted to die because what am I good for really? I was feeling, what's the point? Yeah, children, I cannot take care of. My mother is already dead. My brother won't speak to me. Fortunately for her, I don't her sister-in-law had not given up on her and even offered to pay for her rehabilitation. Yvonne recounts yes. that as one of the best things anyone did for her at the time of her addiction. People have other things to do with their money. Even her, I'm sure she had other things she could have done with her money, but I just thank God that she, she was bold to, to pay for that rehab. Today, Yvonne is proud of her four-year sobriety journey, but mentions that she still experiences stigma. Up to today, there are people who still don't think I have anything to say. I have anything worth listening to. In Kajedo County, we meet with Caroline Kagia, a mother of two whose 20-year struggle with alcohol addiction started when she was 19. She was challenged to a dare and in return she was rewarded with a bottle of wine. According to Caroline, the wine tasted like tea, but a friend of hers shared a tip on how to achieve a high quickly. He told me, Carol, because I know one day you start drinking. If you want to get high and the alcohol to get to your head quickly, you take a gulp and bend over so that it goes direct to, to the head for a head rush. Caroline followed the instructions to the latter, but she ended up finishing the entire bottle and woke up the next morning sober as a judge without any head rush. After finishing her Form 6, Caroline was privileged to go pursue her degree in Eastern Asia, 
where she met other Kenyans and here her drinking escalated. Initially, I would only go out on Fridays, Saturdays. Then it became Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Then it became Thursday, Friday, you know, like every other day. Caroline had started cutting classes and her housemates took note of how she was partying excessively. When things got out of hand, her housemates left the house, saying that they could not stick around and watch her lose her life. They were right to be concerned. I had been in many uh, car accidents with people who were drinking. I had almost been raped many times in the club because I'm so high. I've smoked weed, I've smoked my cigarettes, I've blacked out in the toilet. I find somebody who's been trying to unzip my trousers, but they've been unable. With the high cost of living in a foreign country and no housemates to share costs with, Caroline was left with two choices. Have you been angry at yourself? Or the be a beggar on the streets or return home. She chose the latter. I learned at JKIA and my parents almost couldn't recognize me. They actually almost passed me at the airport. And this is because the car who went is not the car who came back. The car who went was fat and brown. The car who came back was dark and thin. For two and a half years, she stayed clean and things were starting to look up for her. She joined the church choir, she was blessed with a son, she had a well-paying job and she even managed to move out of her parents' home. Unfortunately, in 2016, the thirst for alcohol came knocking on her door again. She had a six-month-old daughter and had unfortunately lost her job, but that did not stop her from quenching her thirst. So you call me, I give you stories, the way we have no food, my child has no diapers, you send me a thousand bob, that thousand bob I've already calculated four quarters, my choice of cigarettes has gone down, my daughter will eat Weetabix and I'll eat boiled eggs. Eventually, people stopped sending her money after realizing that they were enabling her drinking. But fortunate for Caroline, she discovered a Shylock to whom she offered to sell her household items to. Fridge, gone. Four thousand bob, like that. Cooker, gone. I can't even remember how many thousands, gone. My five-seater, gone. Plus the carpet, gone. And just when you think she was done selling everything, she called back the Shylock for more. I tell him, Twanisha is in zote. Zote, 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 zote. Zote, Twanisha. He did it, him and his handyman. And they took everything for a total, not pardo, total of 500 bob. Despite surviving several car accidents and potentially being raped while high, Caroline recounts losing her unborn babies. Due to my drinking, prior to my daughter being born, I'd had two miscarriages back to back because of the heavy drinking. Actually, my daughter is here by the masses of God. With her, I really tried to reduce my drinking. When she had had enough, Caroline went to her dad and requested to be taken to rehab. She recounts not even being able to spell her name. After 89 days in rehab, she came out of rehab and stayed clean until when COVID hit and she relapsed. She was taken back to rehab, only that this time round it was not voluntary. Caroline is proud of her sobriety, but she, however, has a few regrets. I do regret not having been there for my son, because I didn't raise him. Um, actually, I do regret having had the first drink. I wish I'd had the courage to say no. 38-year-old Sylvia Karanja has had her fair share of struggle with alcohol addiction. Not hers, but her husband's. A journey that has brought her a lot of stigma. Along the way, I've lost so many friends. So many friends. Because they're like, uh, it's like I don't have a vision in life. Because I married an alcoholic. Despite the negative words thrown at her, Sylvia has not lost hope in her husband and has tried to get him help. So we've gone to churches, some start, uh, you start the journey with him, along the way they just disappear. The mother of two states that in the early stages of her husband's alcohol consumption, things got ugly and even recounts her husband kicking them out one day. Everything was just okay. The next minute he comes back drunk and tells everybody to leave his house. In 2016, after the birth of their second born, her husband's alcohol consumption got worse and he had to be sent to rehab. Sylvia fell into depression and was admitted in hospital for a month. Uh, I think I got depressed because um, 
I was also admitted in hospital, not knowing what I was suffering from. But I remember when I was taken first to hospital. Charles Geshohe, Sylvia's husband, says that despite his struggles to fight his cravings, the triggers have been his biggest challenge. Uh, if you, maybe an advertisement, you know, and then you've seen somebody taking and is enjoying, you know, hey, he starts salivating. He has not given up on his journey to sobriety and hopes that this too shall pass. Though I'm still struggling, but um, I know uh, at the end of the day, there's a place that I will just absolutely, the cravings will go. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She even lost. Phoebe Nyambura, a counseling psychologist mm. and addiction counselor, highlights that labeling women who have struggled with substance addiction has made women shy away from openly talking about it. For women, I think you'd be found, you'd be there to be loose, you'd be found that you uh, neglecting your duties and your roles as a mother, as a wife, uh, as a caregiver. And because of this, our society brings about a lot of stigmatization. She adds that while in rehabilitation centers, addicts are taught how to manage their addiction. And when they come out, it doesn't mean they have fully recovered. Susan Grace Njeri, NTV, Nairobi. Some heavy stories there, but they do inspire us to.